Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today, in this tutorial, we are going to see how to manage multiple UARTs using head and tail method. Both the UARTs would be able to receive and transmit data of unknown length. And after this video, you will be able to use all those sensors that require serial transmission to work. These serial communication based sensors, for example, ESP8266, GPS, GSM, etc., need to have one dedicated UART port to communicate with the sensor, and another UART port should be connected to the computer. That's why I am using two UARTs in this video. Let's start the Cube ID and create the SDM32 project. I am using F446RE. Give some name to this project. And click finish. Here, I am enabling the external crystal. Next, I am selecting USART 1. You can see the baud rate by default is 115200. I am going to keep all settings as it is, and enable the interrupt for USART 1. Along with that, I am using USART 2 with the same settings. Let's first take a look at the connections. Here, you can see how the devices are connected. So, the UART2 is connected to the computer, and UART1 is connected to the serial device. I am using ESP8266 for this purpose. In both the connections, the TX pin of the controller must be connected to the RX of the device, and RX to TX of device. Let's go to the clock setup now. HSE means, I want to take clock from external crystal, which is of 8 MHz on my controller. Check the PLL clock, and I am typing in the maximum frequency possible. And hit enter. Now the setup is done, so just click save, and the project will be generated. This is our main.c file. Now, first of all, include the libraries for the UART ring buffer multi. You will get these files in the source and the include folders, after you download the code. Exactly where I am placing them. Let's open the header file first. Here, I have written the description, for all the functions available. Here you can change the default size of the buffer. Then, we have UART read, UART write, send string functions. Same as the previous ring buffer tutorial I did. Note that, all these functions, now take UART as a parameter. This is to make sure, that we send the data to the respective UART, among the two. So, we have all the previous functions. Except this one, get after. This one here, saves the entered number of characters, into the provided buffer, after some particular string is matched. I will show you how to use it, in a while. Let's see, what changes have I made in the UART ring buffer.c file. Here, you can define the names for the two UARTs. Before proceeding any further, let's copy this in the interrupt file.
So basically, we are redirecting the interrupt, to use the code written by us, and not the default one. Let's go back to the ringbuffer.c file. Notice here that, I have defined everything twice for the two UARTs I am using. Let's see the UART read function. The parameter is the UART type. If the UART is the UART1, which we have defined up here in the beginning, Every operation will be corresponding to the Rx buffer 1. And in case the UART is UART 2, the operations will be corresponding to the Rx buffer 2. Same things for the UART write function. Get position function gives the position of the string in the incoming data and in the given UART. I will show you how to use get after. And we have all these regular functions available. Let's go to the main.c file, and start programming this. First of all, include the header file for the UART ring buffer. I am defining some new names to the UARTs, so it would be easier to remember them. As I mentioned, UART2 is connected to the computer, and UART1 is connected to the Wi-Fi. That's why I am naming them PC UART and Wi-Fi UART. Inside the main function, first of all we need to initialize the ring buffer. And then in the while loop, I am writing the condition that, if the data is sent from computer, receive it and then write to the Wi-Fi. And if it is sent from the Wi-Fi, then write it to the computer. This is pretty much for now. Let's build this. There are no errors in this. Let me connect my controller before debugging. Okay, it's connected. Let's debug the code. Select the STM32 application here. So the debugger is connected. You can add these buffers to the live expression. I will use real term for the serial monitoring. The controller is connected to the port 5. Let's start the session. I am sending the AT command. And the response is as expected. You can check all these buffers to verify data. So basically, 
the computer sends the data, which is received by microcontroller. Which send it to the Wi-Fi then. Wi-Fi sends the response back, which is received by controller, and then sent to the computer again. That is the response that you see on the terminal. I am typing another command, and you can see the data sent by the Wi-Fi is being displayed on the terminal. This is the reset command. And that's the response from the Wi-Fi. I am not going to show you how to interface the ESP8266 in this video. This is just to test if the multiple UARTs are working alright or not. So, everything seems to be working good till now. Now the important part, in all these situations, either you use the Wi-Fi, GPS, or GSM devices. We need some particular data from the incoming stream. And we don't know when that data is going to show up. For example, suppose I want to know the SDK version, as shown on the terminal here. All I need to know is that it is going to be after SDK version, and it's 5 characters in length. To get those values, I am going to use the getAfter function. First, I am defining a buffer, which can hold those five characters. As this data is sent from the Wi-Fi, I am writing this inside the Wi-Fi part. String is that string, that you want to wait up to. There are five characters. I want to store them in the buffer. And they are being received from the Wi-Fi UART. This must be put in the if loop. Once the characters are received, the function will return one. And we can proceed with our code. Here, I am writing the program to send the string to the computer, and after that, it will send the characters that are stored in the buffer. Let's build this and run. I am sending the reset command first. And as you can see nothing is being displayed on the terminal. This is because the get after function is working in the blocking mode, and it is waiting for the characters. I will try sending a t command, and nothing again. Although we don't see anything printed here, but the data is still being saved in the rx buffer. You can see the response from the Wi-Fi for the at command. Now, once I send the gmr command, you can see some data printed on the terminal. This is same what we would expect, the string and the stored characters. This number printed here is the position of the string in the rx buffer. I was doing some debugging, so I guess I forgot to remove the function. Let's test the function now. It's working good now. I will try to look for another string now. This time I will print the AT version. The version number is of 8 characters. 
so I am changing number of characters to 8. Also I am looking for AT version in the data. And edit buffer, so it can store at least 8 characters. As you can see, it is displaying the version number as we were expecting it to display. This is it for the video guys. I hope you understood it, and you will apply this in your projects. I will just add an example here, so that you guys remember about the usage. This function is very important in terms of using any serial based sensor. As the data length is unknown, and what we want, can come at any position. You can get the header file and the C file inside the source and include folders, after you download the code. Leave any comments in case you have doubts. Keep watching. Have a nice day.